Uh, thanks for the introduction and also thanks for coming to our presentation. I'm Koya and she's Fan, and we are going to talk about the cell heating UI, mechanically and electrically cell heating materials for sensing and actuation interfaces. So, this is a collaboration work between HCI researchers, electrical engineers, and also a material scientist in Carnegie Mellon Universities. So, as all of you know, existing interfaces work very robustly. Uh, but once broken, it's really hard to fix them. For example, my smartphone has a lot of cracks on the both surfaces. But on the other hand, if you look around the nature, we see a lot of examples of living things healing their wound. For example, geckos and starfishes can regenerate their, their tails and arms, and grafted trees can share nutrition, even between the different kind of trees. So our motivation needs to build uh, interactive systems using such kind of cell heating phenomena. And there are two research questions to achieve this goal. The first question is the fabrication method. How can we add cell healability from such kind of cell heating materials into the devices? And even after fabricating a device, there comes another question of design space. So how can we leverage uh, such kind of cell heating devices into the interaction. So first of all, I like to overview the material preparation and the fabrication process. Although we made a lot of effort for material selection and experiments uh, due to the time limitation, please refer to the paper or ask a question later for more detailed information or quantitative data. So uh, what is cell heating polymer? Uh, different from a conventional polymer that cannot be healed after cut into pieces, there are some polymers called cell heating polymer that can form a physical or a chemical bonds after damage. So as you can see in the left video, this is a pneumatic robot made from a cell heating material, which is using a chemical reaction called Dew's other reaction on the right. You can see the material starts to heal in about one hour if we apply 95 degrees Celsius of heat. So although there are enormous numbers of reports on the self, uh, material sciences community, uh, the mat material we use is called polyboroxyloxane PBS, a derivative material of PDMS. And what is interesting about this material is PBS can still heal in six hours without any material supply or external stimulus such as heat to trigger cell heating process. And this amazing phenomena is enabled by the special cross-linking called daily bond uh, between boron and oxygen, so which makes it possible to repeatedly uh, break and connect the uh, polymer chains. But only using the pure PBS uh, as an interface system is not enough due to the two problems. One problem is the creeping effect. Although we do nothing to this material, our PBS starts to deform as time passes due to the gravity force. And the other problem is it's not conductive. So we might sometimes need some conductivity to build a practical electrical systems. So in order to solve these problems of creeping and insulation, we use the material uh, multivolt carbon nanotubes PBS. This is a composite material of multivolt carbon nanotubes and PBS. And uh, carbon nanotubes forms a network structure inside of the composite, and this prevents and sustains the PBS from flowing around. And the other benefit of using multivolt carbon nanotubes network is uh, this can also work as a conductor. So as you can see the video again, although PBS shows a large deformation, uh, but multivolt carbon nanotubes shows almost no deformation. And this material is also uh, conductivity tunable, which is very, very suitable for device fabrication. And of course, this carbon nanotubes PBS inherits a mechanical heating property from PBS. So as you can see, these pieces stick, uh, starts to stick to each other in as short as 10 seconds and then perfectly heals in six hours. So our idea is to build a hybrid system of PBS and a multiple carbon nanotubes PBS to build a hybrid healable system in which PBS works as an insulator while multiple carbon nanotubes PBS works as a conductor and also a mechanical support to uh, constrain the whole system. So for example, if you want to make a device like a controller, 
uh, we can use carbon nanotubes PBS at the bottom at a mechanical constraint and also work, uh, use it as a sensor matrix in the middle layer, which are sandwiched by the insulated PBS layers then. And we built this kind of system using a CNC cutting plotter. First of all, we cut the sheet of PBS and a multiple carbon nanotube PBS into the designated shape. And later on, we just stack them together into the 3D structure. And one interesting thing about this fabrication process is due to the intrinsic mechanical and electrical heating property, we do not need any kind of glue to build a continuous body. We propose three sensing ah. methods in our paper. We can sense a touch of a human finger. We could also sense how much pressure is pressed on the material. A strip of multiwall carbon nanotube can be used as a cut sensor. As our material can self-heal, we can sense the cut and then heal the strip back, use this sensor multiple times. Our approach to realize touch sensing is by measuring the capacitance between multiwall carbon nanotube and the human body. The working principle for pressure and cut sensing is relatively simple. So they share the same logic for the circuit. Multi-wall carbon nanotube is used as a matching resistor between 5 volts and the ground. Before looking to the applications for our paper, we would like to summarize design spaces conventional shape changing interfaces could afford, depending on three phases of material. This includes solid, solid liquid, and liquid. Solid shape changing interfaces has been widely explored in 1D, 2D, and 3D form based on reconfiguring voxels. Solid liquid shape changing interfaces has been introduced by elastomers dynamically transform or conform. Liquid shape changing interfaces has been introduced by manipulating magnetic field or electrical field to heal or fuse multiple droplets. Since our paper is highly based on the material properties for self healing material, we include all three phases in the design space for our paper. We demonstrate transformability and conformability for the solid liquid phase, reconfigurability for the solid phase. Since our material can heal and self fuse, it belongs to the liquid phase for the material. Our first application is a transformative soft controller. It has a cut sensor, pressure sensor, and Cut touch sensor all made out of multiple carbon nanotube integrated in one controller. We want to demonstrate dynamic transformability depending on different user cases. So originally, the controller is in the normal mode as a pressure sensor. The red dot shows how much pressure is pressed on the controller. If you join two controllers together, they will heal into one piece, and it will become a touch enabled keyboard for the piano. As our material is conformable, you can also wrap this around your waist, so it will become a waistband with a slider inside. If you cut this long piece into four smaller pieces, the cut sensor inside will detect the cut and enter the cut mode, so the controller will become four sliders, and you can share those with your friends. Our second application is a conformable damage sensor. Imagine how your skin works. Your skin can feel and sense where you have a damage and then heal itself back. So inspiring by how human skin works, we fabricate this damage sensor as a second skin. We use PBS fabric as the substrate so it could stick to human skin really well. This damage sensor can detect different position of cuts. So it is contrast of cut sensor matrix with the body using self-healing materials. You can cut this sensor and heal this sensor back. Our next application is a reconfigurable actuator. The body of this actuator is made out of Coflex, dragon skin, with the joint parts coating with PBS. Originally, this actuator will give us a bending curve. If you cut its tail, flip it around, reattach it, and let it self-heal for a while, you could get a S-curve out of the same actuator. In the third column, we show we can get a short version for the spending curve by removing part of this actuator. Our next application is a healing heart. Imagine how you go through a heartbroken moment. After a while, you feel better, and your heart is a whole piece again. So this heart is a physical and material version for that moment. We want to show examples of us embedding electrical components like LED inside the devices. When users bring two broken hearts together, the, 
the car sensor inside will detect the electrical connection, and LED will start flashing with the top cover layer PBS self heal in six hours. The right hand side uh, video shows a time lapsing image for the PBS to self heal in six hours. Our last application is a fusing rose puzzle. We dye PBS with different colors. After we connect them, they will self-fuse into a continuous and uniform body after six hours. Multiple, multiple carbon tube strips will also self-heal into one strip. So when we're providing power to it, it will generate heat for the thermal crop making a layer to change color on the edge. So here are conclusions. In the previous slides, I proposed two research questions. The first question was, how can we add cell healability? And I proposed, uh, we proposed hybrid structure of PBS, multiple carbon nanotubes, and other components, and built a layer-by-layer -layer glueless fabrication method. And as for the second question of, how can we leverage the cell healability? Uh, we proposed the five design space of transformable, conformable, reconfigurable, healable, and fusible nature, which cell healing materials can allow and propose the five corresponding applications to them. And here, I'd like to discuss about the safety of the uh, multiple carbon nanotubes because uh, one of the biggest concerns from the reviewer was about the safety. So as some of you know, carbon nanotubes can be dangerous if you absorb the particle into your cardiovascular system. So in the material fabrication process, it is only safe under a suitable wet lab environment and also under a training. But in use, uh, our cell heating UI is safe uh, even when cutting, tearing, and interacting with bare hands. This is because after curing the multivolt carbon nanotube PBS, the interaction force between PBS and carbon nanotubes are so strong enough to prevent uh, nanotubes uh, exposure to the air. And of course, there are some limitations to our project. First of all, uh, there is no trigger to control, control the heating. So there should be another design space if we have a cell heating material which have a kind of switch to turn on and a turn off the cell heating property. And the next, question, uh, next limitation is the slow heating speed so far for six hours in our implementation. But if we just make uh, the material Mm, sustain a certain amount of mechanical force. We don't have to wait until the perfect healing for six hours, but we can just wait, for example, 10, second, uh, 10 minutes or so. And the third limitation is the device design. So anyway, PBS flows inside of the uh, devices, so we always have to constrain the device with some stiffer material like a multivolt carbon nanotubes PBS or other silicones, which decreases the de design freedom. And the last limitation is the stacking-based fabrication method we are using. Uh, the reason why we do not use the 3D printing process is uh, after extrusion, uh, in general, it is really hard to um, keep the shape of the cell heating materials into the same shape. And the reason why we didn't use a laser cutting process is the heat generated from the laser cutting will drastically ruin the cell heating property of the polymer. So I'd like to conclude this pro presentation with some visions of morphing material interfaces as autonomous life form. So conventionally, these people mainly focused on the sensors or con conductors which can sense the environment or think like brains or send information to your body as nerves or actuators as muscles over your body. But we further envision uh, future directions of material interfaces as an autonomous thing like cell heating UI works as a heat level body and self assembly techniques works as a metaphor of metamorphosis, for example, from chrysalis or cocoon into the butterfly. Or I mean, we might be able to use some other autonomous functions with the material we do not have so far. So we believe the interface system with some novel materials will drastically enrich and extend the current border of the interaction designs yeah, this is the end of the presentation. Thanks so much. Okay, we have time for a few questions. Great talk.
What's the effect of temperature on the self-healing speed? If you go cold, if you go hot, and how does it affect the brittleness of the material? Uh, so far, we didn't check the temperature relationship between the self-healing speed, but I think as the temperature goes higher, the self-healing speed also gets higher because the moving speed of the material goes faster and faster. But I don't think in the room temperature that that change is so drastic. Oh, I, I do want to answer the first question also at one more point. So there's a limitation for the material. Uh, there's a limitation for the temperature you can go. If you go be above 800, uh, 80, sorry, 80 Celsius degree, the PBS and multi commenter nanotube will melt, so you don't want to go that high for the temperature. Um, how important is it that the cut you make is clean? If, you, if I was to just tear it, would that make a difference? Uh, sorry, can you please rephrase the So question? you cut with a razor blade, but if I was to just tear the thing in half with my hands and have a very unclean cut, would that make a difference to how well it healed? Uh, the material is uh, stretchy and it's soft. So if you apply too little force, it cannot break. It's like you stretch a, a elastomer, so it will be elongated. Oh, okay. Oh, by the way, we will have a demo session today, so you can come by and play feel the material. material yeah. yeah. yeah I'll, I'll try that. Thanks. <laughs> Any more questions? Hi, Lisa Selkin, University of Washington. Um, I noticed that when you were using your material as a touch sensor, you were using it for these really like discrete um, elements that mapped one-to-one -to, -one to things on the screen. If you were going to use it for a much more fine-grained touch sensor, like a trackpad or something, do you have accuracy and like morphing issues when you break things and like things might not align right back together? Um, do you mind? Yeah, like if you were going to use your material as a touch sensor, but for a, in a much more fine-grained way than having these like blobby keys that map to your keyboard. Do you have to worry about when you cut things and then put them back together if things don't heal like uh, exactly yes. aligned? Yeah, that is a good question. Yeah, every time you have to make it healed, you have to care about the alignment of the material. Otherwise, it's really hard to decompose the material if you make a misalignment. So that's why you just yeah, use yeah. those like discrete yeah. spaces. Thanks. Okay, let's thank the speakers one more time.